And joining us from the Pennsylvania Orthopedic Center, Dr. Donald Mazur. Doc, great to see you again. Good to as see we, you, Mike. As we, as we take a look at some of this Brett Myers video, uh, and we see him limping around, the, the pain is coming from his hip in, in, in what area? What's going on there? It's in the hip joint itself. The, uh, the joint is a ball in the socket. The ball is the top of the leg bone or the thigh bone. The socket comes off the pelvis. And around the socket, the edge of the socket, there's a rim of fibrous tissue called the labrum that helps contain the head within the socket. Uh, repetitive activity, certainly athletics, trauma can cause an injury to the labrum. And if you look, we're bringing up a video now which shows the hip joint. And around that edge of the socket is the labrum. This can tear, and uh, the tear is almost analogous. The analogy I can give you that everybody knows is a meniscal tear in the knee. It's not quite the same thing, but if you get a piece in the joint, you start to get symptoms. That piece gets caught, you feel a click, you have pain. And with a pitcher, what a lot of people I think don't realize is a lot of the force of the pitch doesn't come from the arm. It comes from the lower body, the legs, the core, the drive. And uh, as the night went on the other night, he became more symptomatic. Stan? Doctor, it, it Myers has said that he's felt this right from the start of the season. Could something have been done to avoid it getting worse? If, if early on he had either rested or taken cortisone shots or whatever uh, treatment might have been available, could we have avoided this crisis? You know, I, I don't know that you could completely avoid this if it started to happen. Uh, the likelihood is if you keep pitching, it's probably going to progress. Um, but there's no guarantee that it will. I mean, some of the conservative treatments for this and some of the things he's going to have to consider right now, uh, his options are rest along with a corticosteroid injection, which can decrease some of the inflammation in the hip. And, you know, if you don't respond to that within a month's period, uh, the next option would be surgery. And these are things he's going to have to weigh out. Richie? It is conservative treatment. Do you think it's really on the table for an elite athlete who has to perform at an elite level? And that's, that's the question. Um, it, it's something you can always try. Uh, in his situation and in the team situation, uh, there's a, a timetable component. And um, it's something that he's going to have to sit down and consider all his options. I've seen conservative therapy work. and. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the degree of the tear. Certainly with some minor fraying of the labrum, you have a better shot. If there's fraying and detachment of that labrum from the bone or associated spurs, maybe not so great a chance. All right. If the conservative treatment were to, to work and get him through to October, would he still then have to have it fixed? Not necessarily. If he's symptom free, why have surgery? And the other side of that coin then, Doctor, it, I, I've looked at the schedule. The World Series might run to the first week in November. It, it, is there a chance that if he had surgery in the next seven days, he could be pitching again in late October, early November? Yes. But, you know, it, it depends on the, the degree of the tear and the treatment needed. If you have to go in and just clean up the labrum, shave a little piece off that's hanging off, and do no other work in regard to bony spurs or reattaching the labrum to the acetabulum, the cup, the bony cup, that's a quicker recovery. There's still a period of non-weight bearing after the surgery. There's rehab that goes along with it. Um, if you have to do those other things, repair the labrum, then you're talking about you have to wait for that tissue to heal back down to the bone, and you're talking about somewhere between an eight and 12 week period, and then you have a rehab to follow that. So that's a bit of a, a more lengthy recovery, and uh, I guess less predictable on that timetable. I wanted to get uh, more into the acetabulum, if we could. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I, I, but, but I did want to know, is, is this arthroscopic? Does he get cut wide open, or, or you go in with a camera and, and smaller instruments? This is done uh, arthroscopically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess he went up to uh, HSS in New York, saw Dr. Brian Kelly, actually my partner's daughter's administrator for his practice. Uh, he does a lot of this surgery. There's a few guys across the country that are known for this surgery, and he's one of them. So, I mean, he went and, and got an excellent opinion. 
All right. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see how it plays out. Dr. Mazur, thank you very much from the Pennsylvania Orthopedic Center and, and those uh, images, by the way, from paorthocenter.com. We appreciate it, Doc. Great, good, Mike. Good, good to see you again. Likewise. Good to see you again. Dr. Donald Mazur joining us. Yeah, Rich. There's one thing.